Hi, my name is Takui Hayashi, Brigham Center for Biosystem Dynamic Research for the UPN. The title of my talk is Why Brain Connect Limits in Mumset, Mechanics, and Humans Be a Much More Than Newly Dish. What is a connector? It is an attempt to understand the brain function, structure, and connectivity comprehensively, distributed in a wide range of spatial scale ranging from 10 to 6. But there is ample evidence that both microscale and macroscale features are key factors of nervous system organizations. Our knowledge about how these different scales of organizations interact is remarkably sparse. Two key features are microscale unit neurons and the microscale unit cortical areas. Neurons and cortical areas have been traditionally observed by microscopy in the period of Bergman over a century ago. But I would discuss on how we can tackle this cross-scale challenge by using cutting-edge non-invasive MRI. Human brain consists of 86 billion neurons, among which 16 billion are located in cerebral cortex, a very thin sheet-like structure, but is tremendously folded in the humans compared to the other species. The volume of human brain is around 200 times larger than marmoset, a cubic root of the volume. An isometric scale ratio of the volume is around five times larger in humans than in marmoset. In comparison, the cortical area of the humans is around 100 times larger by absolute value and 10 times larger by isometric scale ratio than in marmoset. And the number of neurons in humans' cerebral cortex is around 80 times larger than marmoset. So this highlights enormous enlargement of cortical surface area roughly in proportion to the number of the cortical neurons. While recent literature using the two photon microscopy found that the size of the cortical neuron somer is almost the same between the marmoset and the humans. The recent technical advancement of MRI revolutionized the mapping of the cortical areas, even that it allowed a single subject analysis based on the much model MRI dataset among which the resting state of MRI had the highest predictive values. But there is a huge gap between the human brain and the non-human primate because of the technical lag and the lack of knowledge on the cortical anatomy and the function using the same techniques in a scalable manner. Consensus of the brain preservations and correspondence to the humans are yet to be resolved, and the addresses of large model MRI is yet to be combined with other microscale data such as genetics and cells, both in the human and the non-human primates. So how can we collect the brain connecting data? How can we understand the mechanism of connecting the NHP? There are several methods that allow us to investigate the NHP connecting, but as I told you, I will focus on the in vivo imaging with the MRI trained for NHP. And we'll not discuss details of other branch model methods because of the limited time. However, other promising methods should include the ex vivo imaging for 3D histological analysis and spatial transcriptomics or ex vivo high resolution diffusion MRI. Another important approach is a genetically engineered animal model, which is also promising to resolve the connectomics mechanisms bridging the genes and behaviors. Three important tools for HP style MRI imaging consist of a 3D MRI scanner, sequence software, and optimized NHP radio frequency receiving coils. Particularly, the radio frequency receiving coils are important that means to, to sensibly pick up the very small signal from a small object like NHP brains. The 3D system is balanced in terms of the homogeneity of the static model field, radio frequency and high gradient strains, although the out of high field techniques are also promising in the future, both in human and non human primates. So, we are now able to collect high quality structure images in a short time, similar to the human brain scanning. The one then teaches whether the images are useful to precisely isolate the brain and the cortex based on the high contrast of the images. Obtaining the T2 weighted images also provide a T1 divided by T2 weighted contrast, which provides a mildly like contrast over the cortical surface and useful comparing the cortical relations between the human and non human primates, as we will discuss in the later slides. We implemented a very basic technique for a brain segmentation across multiple species, which allows a high level of accurate reservation to the standard space 
as well as much more the registrations, and hence makes it possible to analyze a large number of the data sets automatically. For the functional MRI in the awakening animals, not only do we apply the conventional distortion with motion correction of the images, but noise reduction algorithm by machine learning was further developed for cleaning the data as much as possible. This is to pick up the, the specific signals related to the neural activity in the resting state brain. So to sum up the methodological aspects, we follow the HP style neural imaging approach that respects the acquisition of the large amount of the modality of the data with the high spatial resolutions and the temporal resolutions, respecting the spatial fidelity, accurate registrations, parcerations, and minimizing blurring and smoothing during the whole process of the analysis. We also embed the metrics of the cortical grammatical boxes into the 2D seed like surface and those of the subcortical boxes into the 3D globular like volume space. A special format of the shifting allows combining the cortical surface and the cortical volume data into a single jet set to make it easier and more concise to handle the complicated brain data sets. The same approach is applied to non-human primate data, but careful attention has been paid to consider large differences in the brain scale and the cortical thickness and species-specific noise in the adjuvants. Then we tried using the neural biological metrics such as T1 divided by T2 by the man corrected for bias field, function connected in the resting state network after the noising, and diffusion neurons maps after the noising of validating with the histology data. So marines consisted of the large molecules, forms membrane structure, surrounding the neural axons, and is known to be example of the convergent evolution in the nervous system found in many species, including mammalians, fishes, and worms. It allows press transmission of the neural activity, where it is also known to inhibit the branching of the axons and plastic changes in the brain tissue, thus possibly having the feature of the two-edged wars for neural functions. Several cortical myelination during development is related to the function organizations from rodents to primates, Thus, myelin mapping may be useful to understand the cortical evolution, developments, and aging. So, this is a cortical myelin map of human brain published a decade ago by Glasser and Defiance and overlaid with a cortical parcellation of human brain published recently. You can see the highly myelinated areas are located in the early areas of somatosensory sensory motor, auditory, and visual functions whereas the unlikely myelinated areas in the higher cognitive areas include the prefrontal, temporal, and parietal areas. These distributions are highly correlated with the cortical mapping of the myelin standing done over a century ago by Flexic. Glasser also found that the tiny language area in the left primordial cortex, area 55B, which had the lightly myelinated as compared to the surrounding the IPV areas, and this find is also confirmed with the myelin histology mapping by HARP, published in 1956. Okay. To achieve myelin mapping across species, high resolution MRI were obtained with the optimized protocol for each of the species, and by building the accurate cortical reconstruction techniques in five genera from human to mammal set. The upper row indicates a single subject cortical surface, by which we can see high highly folded pattern in human, as compared to more smooth folded in non-human primates. Making the mighty map color coded overlaid on the inflected surface, the average of the cortical surface shown in the lower panel clearly shows the distribution of the mighty in each of species and the comparable across species and the high, highly myelinated in the array areas, but we see the much differences in the lightly myelinated association areas including the prefrontal temporal and parietal areas, particularly enlarged in the humans. Therefore, these cross-species myelin maps may serve as a landmark, point by point for finding the corresponding cortical coordinates between the species. Now, what about the cortical microstructure if it was analyzed more quantitatively? Recent diffusion MRI allows us to make quantitative estimations for the neuride by adopting the multiple compartment model for diffusion water molecules, 
and its resultant contrast is likely more current with the neural descriptions found in the histology than with the traditional physical models such as DDI. So based on the previous findings that the myelin and the neurites or axons are closely correlated in their distributions and thickness, we first investigated the cortical distribution of diffusion-based neurite density and found that that is moderately correlated with the contrast of the T1, T2 weighted myelin as shown in the bottom. However, when we look at the plant very carefully, we also found that association areas rich in unmyelinated fibers such as insula and the anterior temporal cortex tends to be outlier of this plot. Thus, we hypothesize that the diffusion MRI-based neurites may be related to the neurites themselves or a neural membrane, or even number of the neuronal cells in the tissue because that the neuronal membrane is the highest limiting factor for the diffusion motions, and that the neurites in the cells are closely coupled in the tissues. Interestingly, variation of the cortical MRI-based neurite density in macaque brain was found to be very well correlated with the actual neural cell density of the cortical gray tissue studied by Collins. And there is a very high correlation between these two quantitative measures of different modalities. This is further strengthened by the investigating diffusion MRI in other primate species, marmoset and humans, in which we found that the cortical average diffusion neurite density was highly correlated with the average cell density in the literature, in which small brain primates marmoset had the highest value of the diffusion-based neurite density and cell density, while the middle-sized mechanics had the intermediate range of the neurites and neurons density between human and marmoset, which is also supported by finding that the cell density tends to be lower in larger brain primates investigated in a large number of the species studied by Herculano and Huse. So these findings suggest that diffusion-based quantitative imaging allows us to estimate the neuron of cell counts in tissue, although further analysis is needed, particularly for a degree of the causality of these findings. As for speech is compression, outstanding question is how cortical areas are expanded originally in humans along the evolutionary axis. Earlier studies using a precision with homologous regions, PHRs, and surface-based registration of build that expansion of the cortical areas as much as 32 times from mechanic to humans, particularly in the association areas, followed by default mode network areas and the lowest in the early areas. Recent studies also show that evolutional changes are more similar to the postnatal growth of cortex rather than the prenatal growth. However, these findings are primarily based on the limited number of the PHRs, which are mostly located in the early areas, as we want to find out the organization in the association areas, both in the human and non-human primates, but how it has been done. So we assume the resting state function MRI may uncover PHRs in the association areas. The preliminary data set in the Nessar's macaque have revealed the putative Formulans network by sitting from the two key areas, the ventral promoter and the posterior cingulate cortices. The ventral promoter area is also known as the area where mirror neuron is found by Rizratti. <coughs> the functional connectivity seated from the ventral promoter area show the positive correlations in the inferior parietal lobules and the anterior insular cortex in the medial prefrontal areas, both in the macaque and the humus, where the posterior cingulate cortex seed show the very well-known default mode network that covers the lateral posterior uh, part of the parietal and temporal cortex and the prefrontal areas. Interestingly, these two FC maps are anti-correlated with each other, possibly suggesting the inherent cross-species mechanism of the resting brain. The other important notion is that looking at the mirror neuron system, the PHT found in the human occipital temporal areas is not found in the macaque brain, and the areas also show that the uh, dis discrepant activation in the default mode network as well, showing positive, uh, positive in macaque, negative in humans, suggesting that the PhD in the human brain lacks the corresponding to, the, to, to that in the macaque. 
So our finding is very interesting because there is also a similar story in the cytoaptonics in of this area in human PhD. The old literature by economic skinness have described the pH and PHT are located in the occipitemporal areas of the human brain. And Bonin and Bailey in 1947 were trying to find the corresponding areas of the human PhD in the macaque brain. But they never reached the conclusion that macaque occipital temporal areas has the same site architecture as the human PhD does. Thus, they left the name of this area question mark. Taken together with the previous slide, we may possibly suggest that the PhD is a de novo area in the human brain, not found in the monkey brain, but to, con to conclude that we should investigate absence or presence of the precursor area in the macaque brain by very sensitive specs or sensitive methods. In any case, on these much model analysis may potentially provide in-depth knowledge of the species homology. But it also poses the question, what is homologous? What is not homologous? So to gain the insight of the brain homology across species, we may need to collect the functional MRI data while subject to performing similar behaviors across species. An example of such attempts is the face recognition task for humans and monkeys. And the accumulated evidence suggests that their dorsal ventral stream is mostly located in the parietal temporal areas in primates. In particular, inverted and upright phase recognition paradigm have separated those dorsal and ventral axis. And it's interesting that human PhD is located at the intermediate between these two streams. So message here is that combining the much more data of the task and the resting state network should provide further depth knowledge on the cross species homology. As for diffusion therapy, it can now be collected by special resolution less than one millimeter higher angular resolutions of 500 directions in non-human primate brain. Pre-crossing fibers are very sensitive to that, that at each box cells. However, the initial validation studies by comparing with a newer tracer reveal the degree of the similarity is not higher than the moderate level. While trichography technique should be much elaborated much further, strength of the diffusion trichography must be its applicability to repeated scans non-invasively. So for example, time-dependent changes of the connections over months and years cannot be evaluated by any means except non-invasive imaging. In that sense, high reproducibility of the imaging methods should be maximized for future neuroscience. Finally, this slide summarizes the application to which the primate connector research should move in the near future. First, we now face the questions how brain is organized from much model, much scale perspective, including genes, cells, cortical areas, functions, and connectivity. So the attempt to making the brain addresses from this data set must be needed. The project by Allen Institute is expected to push forward to achieve such an endeavor. Second, aberrant connections and behavior should be clarified by investigating the connections of the individual subjects and analyzing their behaviors. It should benefit from studying the neuropsychiatric diseases in the rated animal models, understanding the mechanism of aberrant plasticity and the rated molecular mechanism is needed for further therapeutics by neural modulations with neurofeedback approaches. Third, disconnections in the long-range rewiring should be clarified by investigating time-dependent changes of the connector. It should be studied particularly while subject to learning or subject to phase neural generations or by using the rated animal models. Resolving mechanism of injury and rewiring provides a deeper understanding on therapeutic rewiring for future clinical neuroscience. So here is the take-home messages of my presentations. There is a large species differences in the science of brain, not in the science of neurons. Cortical surface, the number of cortical areas, number of the neurons are particularly large in the humans as compared to the non-human primates. Non-invasive imaging across species should take care of the such differences in the brain size, cortical thickness, and folding. Species harmonization is needed for high quality imaging and preprocessing. T1, T2 mind map is useful for capturing early cortical areas across species. Diffusion neuride map is also used for quantity marker of neuron density.
Functional connectivity and task of MRI provide in-depth knowledge on the species homology of non cortical areas. Diffusion tracheography requires variations, but the reproducible methods should be useful for longitudinal studies. Application of primate connectome is to establish brain address of primates and to investigate aberrant connectome, reviling, and intervention in disease and healthy brains. So finally, this slide lists the various resources that may help understanding of my talk, including literature of the connectome and applications, database, technical information. Thanks very much for your attention.